Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi. We're back with Dr. Alberto Montero, Assistant Professor of Medicine, University of Miami. Now we're going to discuss the management of metastatic stage four cancer of the pancreas. Hello. Hi. Dr. Montero, let's assume someone presents to you with cancer of the pancreas that has now spread to other organs. What do you do for that patient? Sure. Um, like I mentioned before, that's unfortunately the most common uh, presentation. By the time pancreatic cancer is diagnosed, it's already spread to other organs. Uh, the first thing that I discuss is to give a realistic understanding of what, what we can accomplish. And the reality is that although we can't cure it, uh, in some patients with chemotherapy, we can uh, improve quality of life and also and prolong uh, uh, overall survival. Meaning the patients, hopefully in a perfect scenario with the treatments that we give, they live longer and they live better also. Now if, <clears throat> if the cancer has spread outside the pancreas, oftentimes the patients ask us, why can't we just surgically take everything out? What is your answer to that? Right. The, uh, the, we don't do surgery, and the reason is that uh, the initial goal of surgery in somebody where the tumor is in the pancreas is to cure them, and so the surgery uh, is, has a lot of complications involved. So if we can't cure the patient, it's uh, basically we're subjecting them to a big surgery without a benefit. And the reason that it doesn't work is that uh, whatever's in the, in, the, in the pancreas is not the whole tumor. So there are cells and other tumors that are, have spread beyond that. So just removing that one area isn't going to really change the whole prognosis with with the advanced pancreatic cancer. Right, because there are tumor cells circulating throughout the body. Right. Now, if the patient has persistent vomiting, it's possible they might have what's called a gastric outlet obstruction. Would you please explain what that is and what you do for it? Sure. Uh, the first part of the intestine uh, uh, is the duodenum, and that's uh, attached to the end of the stomach. And so a lot of times, because the pancreas is on that area, the mass can basically erode into the duodenum and prevent the stomach from properly emptying. So in those scenarios, uh, one of the most common ways that we help with that symptom is to uh, ask a gastroenterologist to go in and do an endoscopy and in some cases they can put a wire mesh to open up the area. In other cases uh, we might employ the use of radi radiation therapy to help shrink the mass to, to alleviate that problem. I see. And you explained this earlier but please explain again what is jaundice and what can be done about it in this scenario? So jaundice is when uh, you get uh, 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 backing up of something called bilirubin, which is something made in the liver uh, that helps with digestion. And essentially, what ha and so essentially, because the pancreas uh, uses the same ducts uh, that come from the liver, a lot of times the tumor can cause backing up of the bilirubin. So, the most common way that we can help with that symptom is that a gastroenterologist can uh, put in a, through a scope a little wire stent within the pancreatic uh, duct or within the common bile duct to op open up the uh, blockage. I see. How does the patient's performance status play into what treatment do you render? Sure. So uh, performance status basically is uh, our way of assessing how healthy a patient is. So patients who have a poor performance status or the worst, they're essentially bedridden, Chemotherapy is not recommended because it can cause actually uh, very severe side effects and it might actually shorten their survival. So in those patients, we generally will treat the symptoms related to the cancer and we won't use chemotherapy. Patients who have excellent performance status, meaning they really have minimal symptoms from the pancreatic cancer, we would consider <coughs> utilizing chemotherapy or uh, maybe consider them participating in a clinical uh, trial. Yes, how do you address pain? Oftentimes patients with pancreatic cancer are in a significant degree of pain. How do you address that? So it is very common to have pain. So that's one of the most important things. So when we see patients, we assess whether they're having pain, how much pain, uh, the nature of the pain, if it's uh, constant or coming and going. And so we use, if they have significant pain, we use a combination of either long-acting long and short-acting pain medications to optimally manage the pain. I see. And then what are your thoughts regarding use of alternative medicines? I know many of our patients do use that. What do you tell your patients regarding its use? 
Uh, the most important thing I tell them is to, uh, I'm open-minded to certain things. I think the most important thing is to let me know what they're utilizing because there may be some uh, complementary alternative medicines that may interact in a negative way with the treatments that they're receiving. I see. And how do you address nausea and vomiting associated with either the disease or the chemotherapy? Uh, generally, with the chemotherapy that we give, uh, with the exception of maybe oxaliplatin, most of the other drugs don't cause severe nausea and vomiting, but we always give medications uh, to help prevent that because it's better to prevent it than to try to treat it. And then we give that we instruct them on how to take mm -hmm. the medications. And then on the day of chemo, we also generally give uh, chemo uh, give medicines to help prevent nausea. I see. <clears throat> how do you follow the patient to see whether the treatments you're rendering is working or not? Do you check CAT scans, tumor markers? What are you doing? The, I look at it in, th I look at three different things. One, how's the patient feeling? Is their pain doing better? Do they feel more energetic? Are, are they not losing weight? Because uh, pain, pancreatic cancer weight loss is very common. So if they're actually gaining weight, that's a good sign the mm -hmm. treatment is working. I look at the tumor marker. So is the CN19 going down? And then finally, <coughs> Every two or three months, uh, depending on the circumstances, we would do a CAT scan, and, and we would expect the CAT scan to shrink if the treatment is working. I see. How do you address the very difficult question of incurability in pancreatic cancer? What if the family does not want you to discuss that with the patient? How do you address that? Um, so with my, my philosophy and, and most other physicians is that it's, an, it's very important for the patient who's undergoing the treatment to understand not only why they're receiving the treatment but the, the goals of the treatment. And so, uh, like I discussed, pancreatic cancer is for the most part an incurable illness and uh, it is treatable uh, and so I usually discuss it up front with the family and I encourage, or with the patient and, with the, and I encourage the family to be part of that discussion as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How do you deal with lack of appetite? Lack of appetite is a, a very challenging problem because mm -hmm. the main issue is that the pancreatic, the cancer is producing lots of substances or cytokines that are causing mm -hmm. the patient to lose weight. So it's not a calorie problem. So a lot of patients think, or family members, that if I just eat enough, that I'll gain weight, but mm -hmm. the, the issue is it's, it's not a calorie problem, it's a cancer problem. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the best way is to treat the underlying cancer. That being said, sometimes patients would like something for appetite, so in some cases I use certain med medications like Megase mm -hmm. to help with that, but Megase has its own side effects. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> what do you think about clinical trials and why would you recommend that in this particular cancer? Well, uh, as a clinical investigator myself, and I'm heavily involved in clinical trials, because pancreatic cancer is such an aggressive cancer and the majority of the standard treatments don't really work, I, I always recommend if there's a trial available for the patients to consider going to clinical trial because the standard treatment really is unfortunately <coughs> woefully inadequate. So any new or alter, you know, alternatives to the standard treatment I think uh, are helpful in this case of pancreatic cancer. What are your thoughts about uh, palliative care in hospice in the setting of stage four pancreatic cancer? Uh, because of the nature, of, uh, because this is an incurable illness, um, I, I think it's important and a lot of research has shown that if you get uh, people who have expertise in palliative care involved earlier, mm -hmm. actually patients not only have better quality of life, but actually in a research in, in uh, lung cancer, they should, patients actually live longer. So I think getting them involved earlier is better and they can actually help me manage the symptoms related to the chemo or the cancer in a more effective way as a team as opposed to me just by myself. So I like trying to get them involved earlier. But in some places they may not have a palliative care team available. I see. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We hope this has been educational for you.